Hello, everybody. My name is Detention, and today we are doing the long, 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 long awaited um, matchup guide. Um, this is going to be part one of four. So um, I'm just going over the matchups today. Um, the next three parts of the Zoe guide is just going to be how to play Hedge Zoe, um, Bubble Zoe, and Q Zoe. Um, those will be self explanatory in those videos. Um, but today is just mostly about like runes, matchups um how to play them and yeah also if you guys uh i don't know if you guys watch my twitch or anything i announced that i got weight loss surgery um i got weight loss surgery on december 15th and um it's been pretty rough but i'm excited so i'm very excited to like showcase like me losing weight and i'm really excited for 2023 because i'm going all in on content such as like whatever you guys want me to do like guides or anything please 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 let me know let's start off with the how this guide is going to work um so it's pretty much just going to go off of the tier list we're going to start at the easiest and then we're going to go to the hardest as you see lux is the highest she is homophobic it's we'll get into that in a bit but um yeah so let's start off with aurelian soul um i'd when I play Aurelian's, when I play against, when I play, Aurelian, Jesus, when I play against Aurelian Soul, um, I think my room page is most likely going to be this. Um, it's going to consist of Airy, Mana Flow Band, Absolute Focus, Scorch, Sudden Impact, and Eyeball Collection. Um, you can abuse Aurelian Soul's pretty bad early game. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can abuse Aurelian Soul's really bad early game. And also, um, the champion's just super weak right now. This is before his rework, and I know he's getting reworked soon, so I'm not going to touch much on that. Um, also, you can take Dematerializer against um, Aurelian Soul just so you can match his Wave Clear because later in the game, once he gets like level 5, he can like insta clear waves and roam. Um, pretty much you win this lane, all stages of the lane. Um, champion's just super weak. And uh, there's not much to go into other than uh, ping your team when he roams. Um, make sure you ward like in the middle of mid lane so you can see if he roams or not. Um, another option is just like um, warding where Raptors is on both sides. And I think that's about it for Aurelian Soul. Super simple matchup. All you have to do is just poke with Q early, uh, look for bubbles. And yeah, that's Aurelian Soul. On to Brand. This is a pretty low elo champion for mid lane. I don't think there's literally any high elo brand players that play in mid other than Soli. Shout out to him. He's a real motherfucker. Um, for Brand... Hmm. Against Brand, I'd probably just go Sudden Impact. I meant Taste of Blood, uh, secondary. And the rest can stay the same. Um, for Brand, honestly, right now, I think the strongest way to like lane with Zoe is going Absolute Focus and Scorch. You're going to get the most bane for your buck. You're going to get the most harass. You're going to get Pryo. You're going to... It just helps you in a lot of different areas. Um, but yeah, Brand, um, make sure you don't ult forwards into his face. He can just kill you. Um, he can... Like, if you ult... He'll conflagrate you. He'll use E and then Q you. So it's a free stun for him. And then it gets his W and then he ults you. It's a whole can of worms. But yeah, for Brand, definitely would recommend this rune page. Um, I think the only f like other tips I have for playing against Brand is like um, when he uses E, you you have enough time to press R to dodge as his Q. That's another one. Um, you can also, let's say you get ulted in mid lane and... Um, you can R over Raptor wall and m make his ult go over Raptor so it doesn't bounce off of you. That's a good, another option. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you play the matchup. And these are the runes for it. Okay, Lissandra. Now, Liss is a bit tricky because she's technically ridiculously easy to lane against. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, why is Lissandra so low? Um, I'm just more or less talking about lane. Um, 2v2ing. Lissandra is a huge bitch to 2v2. Honestly, she's extremely, extremely annoying to deal with later in the game um, because she just has a lot of stuff. Honestly, I would recommend going Presence of Mind and Tenacity against Lissandra. This rune page is perfectly fine. Also, I do... You can go Cleanse. It's completely up to you. Um, definitely would recommend um, playing Hedge Zoe against this, which is where you go like CDR Boots... So you can get like the, your summoner on a really short cooldown and like you just prioritize pushing her out of lane and shoving her in as much as possible. Um, 
some things to look out for is never, ever, ever, like, let's say if the wave state is even into Lissandra, you never want to ult forwards and look for a bubble because you can just get stunned and then you, you'll you just die. Or she'll just E forwards and kill you. Um, other than that, it's a pretty simple matchup when it comes to, like, trading. Uh, Zoe's Q is way shorter cooldown than Lissandra Q. Lissandra Q does have a little bit more range, like, uh, in terms of, like, she can go through creeps. So you just have to get, wait around that and make sure you angle around creeps and look for good bubble angles and make sure you track her E cooldown. I'm pretty sure level one, it's like 20 plus seconds. So if she uses it, abuse, abuse it, abuse it, abuse it, because it is a very easy matchup to abuse. I think that's that one for that. That's for Lissandra. Okay, Kiana. Now, people are going to be like, why the fuck is Kiana down here? Kiana is so hard to play against. Oh my God, like, I'm fucking terrified of Kiana. Girl, let's be real. Most Kiana players are horse shit. They outplay themselves before they do anything. Um, the page to go against Kiana is this page right here. And the trick is to beat Kiana, you go crown. You can go crown or you go um, Everfrost. She can never kill you. Ever. She literally can never kill you. You push her 24-7. You abuse her fucking early game. It, she, her early game is so bad. Like, Zoe just wins that matchup, like, extremely, extremely hard. She can just shove, shove, shove. Make sure in these easy matchups, you ward well. Like, you ward your jungle. Um, you ward, um, like, raptors. You can ward... Uh, let's say if, like, you get a really hard shove in, you can ask your support to, like, come, like, ward, like, the river pixel. It just depends. Um... Yeah, for this matchup, pretty much you just asphyxiate her. All you do is just push her in over and over and over again, and she can never actually kill you. Um, the only ways that she can kill you is if you fuck up. So the matchup is definitely like, if the Zoe player is bad, the Kiana will obviously win. But like, if the like, let's say it's two bronze players against it, most of the time, the bronze um, Zoe player will win because it's a pretty self-explanatory matchup. You just harass her, and she's super weak early game. Okay, now on to TF. T TF is a bit weird. See, TF is an easy matchup just like on paper, but I think personally, I know Spellbook is getting a change. I, like if it was a high low game, I'm more or less just talking about like, like, like in general. Um, honestly, this page is fine. You can go electrocute. I mean, he can never kill you and you can pretty much just scale for free in the lane. Um, the only way you die is if like you like die to a jungle gank or something. You can go precision secondary for tenacity rune, um, but definitely would not recommend it. Like it's you can just buy mercs or yeah, the cha the champion's just really outdated in terms of like what he does. Um, I don't know about ADTF, but APTF is like super like it's pretty easy to lane against, and the only things you need to work uh, look out for is ulting forwards. Let's say if he ults forward, um, if you ult forwards and you get stun carded, it's really bad. Another thing you can do is let's say when he's throwing his stun at you, you can ult, so it buffers the um, your jump, or you can buffer your sleep before the stun goes off. That's a huge, huge, huge thing in this matchup. So make sure you learn how to buffer your spells, and these are the runes I would take into TF. Now onto Zillion. Girl, first of all, who the fuck plays this? I know literally who plays Zillion. The champ is so, like, he's good. There's like ch there's challenges Zillion players like Tempos and Zillionaire, but Tempos plays uh, Zillion Sport. Zillionaire plays Zillionaire. I meant Zillion Mid. Um, honestly, you can just take these runes against him. You can take Scaling runes. You can take Absolute Focus Gathering Swarm because, I mean, you can try killing him. You're probably not going to. It's probably just going to be a snooze fest for like a billion fucking years. So definitely going these runes, just waiting it out, scaling. Um, one thing that Zillion does do really well into Zoe is later in the game, he can just flash EU. So make sure you're wary of that. Um, also make sure that if you're ulting forwards, his bomb is already on cooldown. Because if you ult forwards, it just gives him a free double bomb. Um, it also gives him a free slow. So you have to be careful of that. There's just, there's a lot of things that like very nuanced about the matchup where like you just have to know the cooldowns of the champ um and also later in the game it's super annoying to play against him because he has his ult it's super annoying but other than that it's 
pretty free. Okay. Now on to Zoe favored matchups. These matchups were, it is Zoe favored. It's like, yeah. First off is Chogath. Um, the champion may or may not be racist and homophobic, but it's fine. I'm here to help. Um, there's honestly no point of going Scorch against... Um, honestly, you could probably go first strike into Cho'Gath and just farm gold. It would probably be probably be good. Um, definitely into Cho'Gath, I would take cut down. I've been liking this rune a lot this season because um, there's just so many tanks. Um, so yeah, definitely into Cho. I would recommend going like airy, cut down... Um, Precision. First of all, you're never gonna, you're never gonna poke this fucker out of lane. He stays in lane forever. All you do is just you scale, and like the reason why it's Zoe favored is because you just push him into the tower. Um, yet again, Cho'Gath can get the upper edge. Let's say if you all forwards, he silences you, knocks you up. Or let's say you all, you all forwards, you miss your bubble, he knocks you up. You get feasted. So it's definitely, uh, yeah. It just depends on how good you are at Zoe, and I definitely think for this, this page is very basic. I would recommend going like CDR boots, Leandries, um, into Void, Rabadons. Perfect, perfect items against Cho'Gath. Um, just great, great, great items in general in this matchup. And that's prim pretty much how you play it, is you just hard shove him and ward. <laughs> okay, Corky. Now, I have nothing special to say. It's fucking Corky. <laughs> um, Corky is just, yeah, I don't, I mean, he's not really popular. Um, you can scale for free. Um, you can kill him early game. You can look for trades, so you can go Scorch if you want to. But if you want to go for the late game scaling, you obviously can go Gathering Storm. Um, Zoe into Corky, it's kind of, it's, it's Zoe favored in lane, but later in the game, Corky can side lane really well. And Corky has a lot of pressure on Zoe when like he can just jump on her. Um, if he takes cleanse, it's really, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky if he takes cleanse. But um, definitely, I would recommend doing this rune page. Against Corky, go like, I mean, you can go Ludens, you can go, I mean, Banshees is fine. Well, actually, Banshees is kind of shit because he in Sprox said, just MR is fine. Um, make sure when you're playing against Corky, you ask your team to help you side, or what you want to do is you want to stack the wave and then, I mean, um, crash the wave, let it build up like into a slow push back, and then collect the wave and then group. Uh, Zoe's not really a side lane champion, so you should be able to like collect the side wave. And, yeah. But um, in lane, Zoe hard wins. Um, she pretty much has a complete autonomy unless it's like a super weird Korean pogger core. I don't fucking know. I don't see any good corkies. There's no good corkies on it. Okay, Karthus. Um, this matchup is pretty much all about movement. Um, it's pretty simple. I'm going to do the same rune page as the one before. Um... The entire matchup is just you knowing, like, how to dodge Karthus' spells and baiting him into using his spells. Um, honestly, I think the best way to, to like, get used to laning against Karthus if he does become popular, because I know, I mean, he's not popular right now, but, like, he's popular in high year lows. Um, it's just, like, go into a custom with a friend, ask him to shoot, like, a bunch of cues at you and see how you dodge them, or just look at, like, watch Karthus players' dodge patterns. And then you can get really used to it really quick. It's kind of the same thing with Syndra where you bait him into using a spell and then it just goes away. Um, so in this matchup, he pretty much almost always has shove on you, but you can look to kill him. Um, let's say if he uses his Q on the wave, while he's queuing, while he's in that animation, he's stuck. You can do a little hedge really quick, which a hedge is a fast Q. So you can look for a little fast Q. Um, definitely recommend rushing boots in this matchup and later in the game, obviously go Zanias because it's Karthus or sit on a stopwatch if you need it. So that's how you play the lane. Okay, Katarina. Now, like, the matchup is easy. She can never, she can never really kill you. Um, the problem is, is controlling Katarina. Versing Katarina or versing a good Katarina um, she'll just make it so she'll get opportunities to roam or like she'll control her, control her wave really well. But like in general, I think the only thing you need to watch out for is you getting poked out by Qs, um, looking for her uh, all in level two or level three 
let's say if she, let's, perfect example. If she starts Doran's Blade, she wants to fight you early game. She wants to fight you. Or let's say if she, uh, I mean, Doran's Blade Katarina is definitely the most, like, deadly, like, all in from Kat. Because it, like, Zoe just has really low base armor. armor. So, in this matchup, 100, 100, 110, 10, 10, 10 go, you can go Crown. Or you can go um, Ludens. Honestly, all the Mythics are fine, but definitely would recommend like buying a lot of control words, warding, and um, honestly, you can go Dmat in this matchup, so you can like force her to stay mid. Um, pretty much the entire matchup is you forcing her to stay mid and not being able to roam and making it so she loses CS under tower and getting good vision. So that's how you play against Katarina. Okay, next up is Silas. Oh, this champion is so quirky and fun to first. Woo! I hate Silas. Um, Silas right now is pretty strong. Um, it's pretty much the same thing as uh, Katarina. He can never really kill you unless you fuck up really bad. Um, I mean, there's there's been times on stream where I walk up to him like an idiot, don't know he starts E, half my HP is gone, and then I'm bitching and screaming yet again, but it's my fault. Um, the entire matchup is just like a spacing matchup. And like poking him out. And later into the game, when he gets two items or one item, um, he outscales you super hard. And it's super frustrating to side lane versus him. So best best thing to do is like I said, is you need to just like set up a side wave so it slow pushes back to you. You get the co you collect the creeps and you group. And you just force, force, force. With Silas, you wanna go CDR boots. So you can Again, Silas, you want to go CDR boots so you can just bubble as much time. You want to be, you want to have as much pressure as possible. But uh, yeah, that's how this matchup works. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you just harass them with their little cues, and that's about it. Okay, Talia. Now this champion is not popular, but um, yet again, super simple matchup. You can, this, I mean, this is just like the bread and butter, like trading rune page, you know? Like this is like the rune page for trading. Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, she's super weak early game. She can't really contest you. I mean, she could look for a threat, kill level three, if maybe, but it's probably not gonna happen. Um, you pretty much have a, a complete autonomy of the lane until like level seven and then she starts getting more wave clear than you and she can threaten to roam. So definitely warding or um, telling your teammates where Talia is or making sure Talia stays mid is definitely how you play this matchup. And look for short range cues, obviously. And do not alt melee range into Talia because that is a free thing for her W and her E and then you're pretty much dead. And that's how you play the Talia matchup. Okay, Vladimir. I have a lot of friends that play Vlad and they say this matchup is like super easy for Vladimir. So free, but honestly, I don't think it's that free for Vlad because most Vladimir players, they like tr hard trade early or they don't, they like waste their pool. Um, in this matchup, you need, 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 need to prioritize CDR in this matchup. So you need to go CDR boots, whatever. And this is the page that I recommend going into Vlad right here, this page right here, electrocute, all this is fine. You want to burst Vlad as fast as possible down while having your bubble on a short cooldown. So honestly, treasure, I mean, I'd probably go with this. Um, so you want to go like, uh, Lu I mean, CDR boots, um, Ludens, Lichbane, Rabadons, like you want to like do as much burst up front as possible to the target. I think that's definitely the best way to play against Vlad. Um, and yeah, you just do like short range cues, you win trades early, blah, 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 it's pretty easy. Okay, now we are on to the skill matchups. Uh, skill matchups where it can go swing either other way. Um, this is saying like, if, this is in my opinion, like both like, um, people were equal in skill and this is how I would play the matchup. So starting off with Malzahar. So in the Malzahar lane, you need, you need to go teleport. Um, 
you're literally going to get outpaced the entire game if you don't get, take TP. So against Maltar, I definitely recommend going uh, Spellbook, Magical Footwear, uh, D-Mat to match his Wave Clear, Cosmic Insight, and then you can go uh, this right here, Absolute Focus Gathering. But I definitely, I'd say probably Transcendence is safer. I also runs uh, CDR Boots, and the entire matchup is just Wave Clearing. Malzahar is just gonna keep you mid the entire game. That is his job, is to pressure wave after wave after wave after wave after wave. But there is ways that you can counter Malzahar is like you can look for an early kill, uh, with your jungler. Um, I mean, you can go an aggressive rune page against Malzahar. This is mostly like for high elo. I would definitely recommend doing this page. But you can also do uh, this page into Mal's. It's doable. Um, this page is fine. As long as you take a page with Dematerializer, you should be fine. And TP. I mean, you can't take TP. If you don't want to take PB, you can't take Ignite. Um, definitely look for all ins level three make sure you keep track of his voidlings because if you get hit by malefic visions which is a z you're not gonna win the fight at all you're not gonna win it at all he out damages you and also he can just pop up a void lane and block your bubble also ult, let's say if you ult forward he can just ult you for free it's fucked it's a pretty fucked matchup it just depends on how you play the waves and how you space yourself against malzahar to deal with him. Uh, that's how the Mazahar matchup goes. Now on to Fizz. Okay. T I have so many of my viewers being like, I can't deal with Fizz. Fizz is racist. He caused World War II. Champions can't. So like, girl, let me, let me tell you. Let me give you the tea. Okay. You do this rune page against Fizz and you go barrier. What the fuck can he do? Literally, what can Fizz do? And you go crown. You go crown. Like a little rat. Like a little rat. A little cockroach rat. So basically what you want to do is you want to uh, shove in Fizz early with like early cues. Make sure, make sure you do not walk up if he starts E. So let's say if you like Q forwards and you look for like walking, for looking for a Q on Fizz, he'll E and then E into you. Do not do that. Wait until you see what spell he takes. Or look for a short cue on him and then see what he takes. And then from there, you can play the matchup accordingly. When you get crown, he literally can never kill you. The only time Fizz can kill you before any of this is if you have no hands, you fuck up extremely hard. Or uh, let's say the jungler ganks you, you get chunked and then he kills you and you're like, you greed. Um, I need to stop saying, um, Jesus, I keep saying um so much. Okay, definitely think in this matchup, of using Fizz early game, rushing crown is very, very, very vital in this matchup and taking barrier. I mean, Fizz can, I mean, Fizz can side, but once it comes to like a team fight stage, you just, you play bubble Zoe or hedge Zoe. You just spam those bubbles. And you'd be a little cockroach. You'd be a little rat. He can never kill you. So that's how you play this matchup, in my opinion. Okay, on to Echo. Echo, I've been seeing actually a lot more than like usual. I don't know why. Maybe because like Arcane's still like bat chest so amazing, but uh, Echo, pretty much how you play this matchup is he is really, oh, ooh, he's really weak. Levels one, two, and three. Um, He can look for an E on you early in a Q. But he's mostly just going to look for wave clear, wave clear, wave clear, wave clear, wave clear. The way you play this matchup is you just play aggressively. You play the waves aggressively. Let's say you look for like a crash and you look for a roam. Shit like that. Um, later in the game, let's say when it gets like an item, once it gets protobell or once it gets a little bit further, I don't think you can ever 1v1 him unless you start off with a bubble or you start off with hitting him with a Q into a bubble. Um... The matchup can swing either way. It can snowball extremely hard. Also, you need to go Everfrost in this matchup. It is extremely, 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 extremely important to go uh, Everfrost in the Echo matchup. Make sure you do not side lane versus Echo. I repeat, please do not fucking side lane versus Champion. He will always beat you. He will always beat you. Super safe. You need to group and team fight against the Champion. Do not side lane against him. You will always lose because your jungler will not follow you because they're bronze. 
Okay, next champion, Galio. I haven't honestly seen Galio in a while, but it is a skilled matchup. It can swing either way. Um, mm, honestly, Preston's Mind Cut Down here is fine. Um, cut Down and Tenacity Rune is also fine here. Um, taking Arian Scorch, perfect. You can just, you can, you can kill Galio early. You just hard shove over and over again. Once he hits three though, that's when Galio becomes a little bit homophobic, okay? Galio is going to look to all in you. He's going to look to um, look for ways to like, like let's say, let's say uh, you are forwards and you miss the bubble. A good Galio is going to eat right away, taunt you, die. Um, make sure, yet again, Galio is like a roaming champion. He wants to roam as much as possible. Make sure you tell your teammates, oh my God, Galio's roaming or like... Honest, okay, you can go D mat into Galio as well if you want to match his wave clear because Galio's wave clear is actually really fast. Um, you can abuse him early, but later in the game, it is 100% um, in Galio's favor. And until like middle of the game, it's even. Early game, it's still kind of skill because like levels one, two, three, he can't really kill you unless he like just something crazy and flashes on you in level three, he's going to look to all in you. But yeah, that's how you play the Galio matchup. You just uh, farm items. You could, you can go Mercs into Galio if you really want to, but he can never really kill you. I mean, he can kill you. Depends on what items he goes. Definitely would recommend doing this, the setting up waves thing later in the game for side laning um, because Galio, he can side lane, but keeping Galio away from the team and forcing him to ult in or baiting his ult in is really good. So that's how I play against Galio. Okay, Heimer. Oh my god, quirky wacky champion. You're never gonna fucking kill Heimer in lane. The only time you can kill Heimer in lane is if he's literally drunk. Like, like there's there's not even a there's no point to even taking the attack speed rune. You're not fighting you're not fighting a human, you're just fighting like an AI pusher. All he does is shove 24-7. All you have to do is like Wait until Ludens and then you can kill him. That's when it starts to become a skill matchup because, for instance, you bubble him. He puts a turret down. You need to angle your Q around the turret. So it's pretty much all about how you can hit Heimer through his towers or how you can hit Heimer with a bubble. Do not, I repeat, do not alt towards Heimer Dinger later into the game. He will alt you and you will die and you will throw the game. I've done that. So many times, and then I'm like, Heimerdinger is so broken, Blah. but I'm like, it's my fault. Um, just farm, wait until two items. You can go, I mean, you can go like Shadow Flame if they have no AP, I mean, no um, MR, but in this meta, everyone is a tank, so definitely Shadow Flame is not the best. I just go like Ludens, Void Raba, Ludens, um, Lich Main Raba, just depends. Yeah, that's how you play the Heimer matchup. Jace. Now, Jace is not popular at all. Like, I don't even know why I fucking put him on this list. But it is it is a skill matchup. Um, into Jace. Would recommend going Electrocute. You can go Airy. It just depends on what runes he takes. Or how the state of everything is. Definitely would go CDR boots into him. Because you want to match the poke that he's poking out later into the game. Uh, in lane, when, he, when he's jumping onto you and he's doing the to the skies move, make sure you save your bubble for then because it's a guaranteed hit. Do not alt forwards to look to bubble. You can if you want. You're going to miss it. You're going to be like, oh my god, Jace is broken. But like, it's just a timing issue. So I would just take this rune page into him. Uh, also, Jace is a good side lane champion. So you cannot side... Yet again, you can only collect waves. I cannot stress that enough. You're going to hear this a bunch of times. You just collect waves over and over and over again. Okay, who's next? Ari! Now, this matchup, if the Ari goes that airy Scorch build, is really hard. It's actually hard to lane. Um, 
these runes are where it is at. You want to do short trades against Ari. You want to map because she's just going to be looking for Foxfire trades um, later into the game. I'm um, later into lane when you're six. Do not alt forward. You will get charmed and you will die. It's stupid. Look for bubbles through walls. Um, I mean, you can look for alt forwards. Make sure you do it through a wall so she can't follow you. Um, definitely would recommend going Mercs in this matchup. It is pretty rough. If the Ari player is skilled, honestly, it's kind of Ari favored, but it's pretty even matchup in the fact that Ari does have a lot of kill threat on you and she does have a lot of poke on you. So you have to be wary of that. Um, items, obviously Mercs, uh, Lunins, you can go Everfrost. Crown is piss useless into Ari, do not go Crown. I think that's pretty much it. You just play the lane like... You want to trade as much as possible and make sure you don't die to a jungle gank. You want to trade in a way that Ari can't trade back with you. If that makes sense. So that's how you play the Ari matchup. Okay, Oriana. This... Okay. This matchup is actually tricky. It is very, 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 very tricky. Would recommend... Like, if you're not an experienced Zoe player and they pick Oriana, I would not pick Oriana. I, mean, I would not pick Zoe because it's pretty hard. Um, she's going to position her ball where she'll dodge your cues while uh, hitting you with her cues. So you have to bait her into using her spells and then you can go. Um, so pretty much the entire matchup is do like baiting her into using her Q and her W and then looking for a trade. And then when you hit level six, you can just alt forwards, bubble her. You can alt, you can look for fast cues. Just be very wary of where her ball positioning is and also let's say if she ults um you can press r while you're in her r it buffers it you're not in it it's pretty good but in lane it is pretty tricky to dodge her shit especially if you're not experienced would watch where the ball is dodge it when you can okay talon talon mm. Honestly, Talon is not, it's not that hard. I mean, it is a skill matchup, but it is pretty hard. Uh, would recommend going Everfrost into Talon. CD Arbus is really good into Talon, so you can bubble him a lot. Um, look for short little trades early. Make, oh, obviously take armor. Make sure when you're casting Q on Talon, you, I mean, casting E bubble on Talon, it's either he's queuing onto you or going through a wall that you know the direction he's going to. Never, ever, ever just throw that shit out there. You're gonna die, period. Like, you're just gonna die. So, looking to trade early game with him. Let's let's say you get an advantage, it'll snowball in your favor. And yeah, that's pretty much how you play Talon against Talon. You just put wards, you set them up against him when he is later in the game. Obviously, you can't side against Talon because Talon is a homophobic champion. But enough of that. Vigar. This matchup's pretty, like... I mean, it's the same thing as Heimer. You can never really kill him. It's just like a farming game. Um, if the Heimer's smart, he's just going to build, like, defensively, and you can never really kill him. Um, I would take this rune page and farm. Definitely things I don't recommend doing is ulting forwards. He can bubble you. I mean, he can cage you. Um... Looking for short range Qs is really fine. Looking for quick R, like QQRs is fine. Um, into the game, Vigar really wants to look for uh, like CJing and stuff. Make sure you're positioned in a way that you you can access him in the back line through like walls and vision. So make sure you ward in lane later in the game against, uh, what's his face, Vigar. And that's pretty much how you play that matchup. Okay, next is Yasuo. A lot of people are going to be confused on why I put Yasuo here, but honestly, it's like, it's pretty fucking even, low-key. It's pretty even. It just depends on how good you are at Zoe. Um, would recommend this rune page. You're going to be playing Hedge Zoe, which means you're going to go CDR Boots, CDR Boots, Ludens, uh, Lich, or you can go Everfrost if the Yasuo is giving you a little bit of problem. But the way you play it, 
is level one, you harass him. Make sure you wait until you see if you take E or Q. If he takes E, level one, you lose. If he takes Q, level one, you win. Um, level two, um, wait until he uses his E. Like, let's say if he E's through you, he's going to be behind you a little bit. Or when he's going through creeps, just make sure you're, like, you know where you're aiming. Later in the game, obviously, Yasuo... Like in a 1v1, it is very, very, very skill matchup. It's it's always going to be who is better as a champion. Um, so look out for that. Make sure you bait him. Like you can alt forwards and then auto him and then bait him into um, using his wind wall. Also, you can angle the your Q around the wind wall if you do it at a really cheeky angle. It's pretty easy to do. I'll just go into like a custom and like practice it a couple times with your friends. And the matchup's pretty si self simple. Like I said, you just push him in. Or let's say if he starts E, you don't push him in. You ward, you get some good wards, and should be fine. Sorry if I'm like catching my breath. Like I said, I did have weight loss surgery, and I do have stitches, and it's extremely painful to talk this much. But we're fine. On to gangplank. Honestly, gangplank is not popular at all. But into GP. I would take this low key. I would just take this. You can shove him in. Um, it's pretty like, there's nothing really else to talk about later in the game. He obviously just straight out outscales you. He will look for barrels. Zoe's auto attack is instant. So you can kill his barrels really easily later into the game. So early game, make sure you like space him so he can't hit you with Q. Let's say if he keeps queuing you over and over and over again. I mean, you can go like corruption potion against him, but I don't think it's worth. Some things I would look out for is uh, he can freeze the wave in front of his tower and then get his jungler to come. That's really scary. Another thing is when GP is six, he does have global pressure. So make sure you're aware of that. Also GP is a side laning champion, so he can side lane. So you want to be able to set up waves in a way where he is stuck in a side lane and he cannot participate in the game. And you just siege with your team. Also, you can remove your bubble, which is pretty annoying. But other than that, it's a pretty skill matchup when it comes to laning. But outside of laning, GP will just take a steamy shit on Zoe most of the time. Okay, on to Seraphine. Now, uh, originally, I had Seraphine under under Zoe favored, but a lot of my friends I asked for advice for, I asked Pekin, I asked Nebula, I asked uh, Cupic for his opinions on everything. For Seraphine, she can just perma shove you in, and it's actually kind of tricky to deal with. Also, once Seraphine hits three items, she becomes Cthulhu, and you pretty much can never siege against her. She will always beat you in a siege. The only way you can kill Seraphine is if you one-shot her. So into Seraphine, you want to be building items like Ludens, Shadow Flame, Robidons, Lichbane. You want to one-shot that bitch as much as you can. And if you can't, good luck. Also, ulting forwards is not the best thing because she can look for a uh, double beat drop, which is her E. Also, she can look for an R. Definitely look out for those things. And Seraphine is not a side lane champion. She wants to group and shove, 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 shove 24 seven. The only way you can pick Seraphine later into the game is if let's say we're at dragon or sieging is on the edges of the wall. You can look for a bubble and like you can look for cues or let's say they're sieging down mid. You have a ward in mid lane. You look for a queue over the wall, you kill her. So that's how you play the Seraphine matchup. She'll just shove you in and uh, look to outscale you. So it's pretty, it's pretty self explanatory. Um, I mean, you can see Cupic. Cupic literally shits on every Zoe he plays against pretty much. And yeah, that's, that's that. That's how he plays Seraphine. Okay. Enemy favorite matchups. First off is Zed. Now Zed is, Zed is very even until he gets, um, Edge of Night. And then it becomes like grossly in his favor. So there's two ways to counter the Edge of Night. One, you can go Everfrost, or you can go um, whatever it's called, Sonya's. You can do both if you wanted to. If you want to stomp, lane. if you're comfortable laning against Zed, this is the rune page I would recommend. This right here, it's going to make it so you can trade against him, you can poke him. Good solid rune page against Zed. If you're not experienced in the Zed matchup, 
I recommend you doing this rune page. Make sure when you're playing against Zed, you always take a Genius Hunter, just in case you want to go Everfrost and also Zhonya's. So you get the reduced cooldown on that. It's really, really, really important. Also, when you're playing at Zed, make sure um, when you are when you ult forwards, bait him to use the R and then bubble behind you. But if the Zed is really good, what he'll do is he'll, he'll shadow and then R and then he'll know you'll bubble behind him. So you want to bubble in front of you because he'll switch with his shadow. So those are some tips for that. Um, also, Zed's shadow gets reduced by his E when he hits his E, so be careful of that. Also, Zed's shadow is kind of the same cooldown as Zoe's bubble early game, so look for that as well. And that's pretty much how I'd recommend playing the Zed matchup. Also, never, ever, 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 ever side lane against Zed. You will lose 100% of the time. You will always lose. Okay. Now, on to LeBlanc. Now, I actually just tweeted that this champion is actually hot garbage. Like, low-key, she's really bad. But this matchup is kind of LeBlanc favored in the sense where it's about, like, your ping difference. Um, playing against LeBlanc, I would recommend doing this rune page right here. This rune page is really good. You can trade with her. Um, you have potential to all in burst her and kill her. Um, in the LeBlanc matchup, I recommend going Mercs just because LeBlanc, like, if you buy any Amar, she actually doesn't deal any damage. Like, you can just live her damage. It's going to be pretty hard for her to kill, her, kill you, but later into the game, she can just one-shot you if you're not, like, careful enough. Also, if you bubble, like, if you ult forwards and, um, you miss your bubble, she'll just dash into you and chain. So you have to keep aware of that. Um, level one, you can start bubble against her if you are a skilled Zoe player and you know the like how distortion works. But if that's not the case, uh, just go Q. You'll be fine. Uh, LeBlanc distortion cooldown is actually really long level one. So keep that in mind because Zoe cooldown level one is like 7.5 seconds. So you will have a lot more time to poke her. Uh, you can do two Qs while she can only do one W in time. So that's how I'd say it. that's how you play the LeBlanc matchup, and that's what you should do. Now into Akshan. In this matchup, <clears throat> you need, you need, you need to need, 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 need to take heal. You have to take heal against Akshan. You will lose if you do not take heal. You have to take heal against Akshan. Trust, 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 trust. You have to take heal. Um, you. This is the same room page as before. You can do this exact room page. It's perfectly fine. Another thing you need to look out for is when he looks to cue you through the minions and he does his aerobic swing, wait for him to land and then use your bubble. Don't try to hit it while he's flying. You're going to miss it. I miss it all the time too. Just don't do that. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely think that Akshan is a very tricky matchup, but it is skill favored. I mean, it is skill. It's a skill matchup. So it's just depending on who is best at the champ, really. Uh, Silent against a champion, you absolutely cannot. Once, if Akshan goes Edge of Night or Lethality, you're kind of fucked. But if it goes Crit, you'll be fine. So, yeah. That's what I recommend into Akshan. <clears throat> Sorry if my nose is stuffy. Um, yeah, it's pretty stuffy. <laughs> <clears throat> Next is Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia is a weird matchup. Because... She, like, you can pressure her early, but, like, she can't really kill you unless you really fuck up. Like, really, 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 really fuck up. So, in this matchup, this this rune page is honestly fine with, like, MR, but honestly, I would go airy. I would do this into Cass. I think this is fine right here. Um, it makes it so you can wave clear against her. Cassiopeia is really pretty bad at roaming. So you can just wave clear as much as you want over and over again. You can do little trades with her. Just make sure once she hits level 2 or 3, you do not, do not look to trade with her unless she misses her, uh, her Q. Don't trade with her unless she misses her Q. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty important for that. Later into the game, let's say if you ult forwards, she'll just R you and then Miasma you. You need to need to need to be careful of that. Look to bubble cast. Look to 
Play against Cassiopeia in a way where you can bubble her through a wall, or you don't bubble her straight on because she will kill you. Uh, she'll just all you and kill you. So that's how I'd play the matchup. Those are the runes. Okay, next is Kennen. Now, I was debating whether or not to put Kennen on this list because he's not really popular. Uh, he's not really popular. But there is three Kennen players in high elo, and they're extremely homophobic and racist. So let me tell you how to deal with them, okay? Let me tell you how to deal with those those little roaches playing Kennen. <laughs> uh, into Kennen, this is what you do. Okay, here's the, the secret T. Boom. 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 Why go nullifying orb? When Kennen hits six, he will look to 100 to zero you, and Kennen's all in is extremely high. It's extremely, extremely, extremely high. So please, 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 please be careful of that. Um, you just buy. You don't buy Merc Treads in this matchup. Um, you just go. You just sit on a null magic mantle. He can never kill you. Okay. He can literally never kill you. When you look to ult forwards, let's say if you miss your bubble, you're absolutely fucked. He'll, he'll eat into you and ult you and you'll die. So what you want to do is you want to... Same thing in the Cassiopeia matchup. You want to look to bubble through walls. I mean, you can bubble head on if you're really cocky. But definitely would recommend not Rring forwards. And if you miss if you miss the bubble, he will kill you. He definitely will kill you. So this is the rune page that I would recommend against Kennen. Also, you should not sideline against that champion. He is demonic and will touch you inappropriately. Rumble. Now, Rumble is a skill matchup in a way that it's all about the wave, really, and how you can space Rumble. Because if you get hit by one Electro Harpoon, you're pretty much fucked. Um, this is the rune page that I would take against Rumble right here. You just want to shove him in and control the wave. Oh. You just want to shove him in and control the wave. Uh, there's nothing really, like, that nuanced about the matchup. Like, you just shove him in. Or you control the wave in the fact where you, your jungler just has to gank you. But if you're really good at controlling waves, Rumble can actually not play the game. But later into the game, when Rumble gets Proto Belt items, one Electro Harpoon, you're going to die. You're 100% gonna die. Do not look look for like Q trades in this matchup, like short, like R, like um, Q, Q, R. Do not R bubble. If you miss that bubble, you get Electro Harpooned. He ults you, you get Electro Harpooned again, but you're dead. You are dead. Do not do not do that. So this is the, the page I'd recommend for Rumble. Uh, next is Karma. Now... <sighs> I hate versing Karma because she's extremely, extremely hard to kill. Like, the only way you can actually kill a Karma is if you, like, actually one-shot her. So, this is the rune page that I would recommend doing against Karma. Right here. You want to just one-shot the bitch. I mean, you're literally probably never going to fucking kill her. Like, actually ever. Um, let's say if you alt forwards, she'll dodge into you with her E, which is like her shield, she'll get movement speed, and tether you, and then walk into you if she's smart. Or she'll, it's really hard to bubble her. So what you want to do is you want to look for uh, long range Qs, long range, I mean, uh, quick Qs and shit like that. Later into the game, Karma is just wanna, she's either gonna just collect side wave, or she's just gonna spam group, 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 group. And what you want to do is you want to put Vision in mid lane while they're sieging or the lane they're sieging and look through bubble opportunities through walls and picks. That's the only way that you can beat Karma later into the game other than just one-shotting her because Karma is just like a siege machine. All she wants to do is siege and fight 24-7. So that's why it's skill because she can, um, she can just do whatever she wants if she's smart. But if you're smart, you can deal with her. And that's, how you, that's what I would recommend against Karma. Now on to Vex. Um, I originally didn't have Vex as high, but uh, Packard Wolf, he's another really, really, really good Zoe player, was like, yo, I'd put rec I'd put Vex into skill match jump. I'm like, why? And he explained it, and I was like, oh, okay, I see it, I see it. So into the Vex matchup, uh, I would take Taste of Blood, and then I would also go Ingenious Hunter. So for Vex... If you buy Banshee's Bell, the champion's literally useless. She can never kill you with R. 
Like, she's actually, she literally can never kill you. Um, also, Vex, in laning phase, she'll deal a lot more damage than you. Her base damages are pretty high. I mean, Zoe's are pretty high as well, but Vex's are pretty, pretty, pretty high. Uh, later into the game, let's say if you ult forwards and you don't have Banshee's Veil up, she'll all you and just kill you. That's, like, way later into the game because she can't just kill you if she has two items and you have Banshee's. Um, key things to look out for is she's pretty shit at, like, wave clearing early. Like, early game, she's pretty bad, so make sure you can sh get Pryo early and shove her into the tower so you can get, like, you can help your jungler or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how I'd recommend the matchup, how, the runes, and how you should play it. Also, just buy Banshee's Veil and you'll be pissed chilly. Okay, now let's go on to uh, very hard matchups. First up on the list is the most demented... <clears throat> one of the most demented matchups is Yone. Against Yone, you want to do this rune page right here. You want to be taking a Genius Hunter. You want to be taking Eyeball Collection. I mean, you can go Sidden Impact if you want. But 100% um, in this matchup, you have to, have to, have to, have to grab a Frost. Because when he presses E... Um, he's just gonna look to kill you, but you can just, like, have a frost and then run away. Also, in this matchup, you need to rush CDR boots, because the cooldown of Yone's E and Zoe is kind of, like, tandem. They're pretty similar cooldown. But if you have CDR boots, then you can actually, but like, you, like, it's more forgiving. Like, you can bubble him more often than his E's up, so you can look for more opportunities to kill him. But if you miss your bubble, you're pretty much fucked. Um, you can't side lane against a champion. You're going to have to probably freeze the wave in a way that your jungler can gank you. But yeah, that's pretty much the Yone matchup. And these are the runes I would take for the Yone matchup. Now on... Who's next? Victor. Um, mm, I guess you can go this rune page into Victor. But honestly, I'd probably go this... I'd probably go this rune page right here. Like, this rune page is fine with MR. Wait, I have to turn this. Yeah, okay. This rune page is fine right here. Um, against Victor, you want to watch out um, for his Q. Make sure you're, like, on the edge of it so you don't get hit by his... Um... Like, you're not in the range of his Q, but, you... I mean, you're always going to be in the range of his E because the hitbox of his E is literally fatter than I am IRL. It's so stupid. But, like, if you can make it so you bait him to walk up for Q, and then you look for a bubble or a Q, then the matchup's kind of okay. But Victor is always going to lane bully you. That's pretty much all he does. Um, in this matchup, take these runes. You'll be safe. You can go Everfrost if you need it. You can't also go Crown. But it's kind of useless because he'll just poke it with E. But it just depends on their team comp. But this rune page is fine. And I definitely think... Um, in the matchup, looking for a jungler gank is probably going to be your best way to deal with Victor because he's just going to shove you in over and over and over again. That's literally his job. Victor's job is to win lane. So ask your jungler for help. Get some good vision so you know where the enemy jungler is because if you end up 2v2ing, you're probably going to lose. But anyways, just try try to control like try to control your ways if you can. If you can't, that's fine. To this room page, and you'll be good to go. Now onto Syndra. This matchup actually used to be way harder. Like way, 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 way harder, but it got a lot easier because um uh the Syndra Q change where her Q cooldown is seven seconds instead of four. Uh against Syndra, you want to do this page right here. Uh where are you? Boom boom. This is the page you want to do against Syndra. You want to be able to wave clear against her. You want to be able to do a little trade with her. A taste of blood. You can go airy, but I'd say that's a little bit more risky because you're not going to really proc it because she can just QE you and like it'll go away. Like you're <clears throat> the only way you're going to be proccing your runes is by like bubbling or Ring forwards or doing like a short little trade, like like a hedge. So this is what I recommend for this. In this Cinder matchup, ulting forwards is really dangerous because she can just hunt, like she literally can just blow her entire load and you'll die. <clears throat> and um, definitely think, need to be wary of that. 
Also later in the game, <coughs> also later in the game, you want to be um, not scything against her, and you want to be looking for ways to bubble her through like walls and stuff. Um, that's pretty much how you beat Syndra in lane. She's just gonna bully you as much as you can. Make sure you can try to get like a freeze or some shit. Get your job. It's the same thing with Victor. You just freeze, or if you can't. I mean, Cinder's probably just going to permit shove you in, so getting your jungler to help you is pretty vital. But if you get, like, one or two kills, you can stub all the matchup. And also make sure you go Mercury Treads, or you will lose. Okay, next is the Golden Chicken! The Golden Chicken! Okay, into his ear, there's a couple rune pages you can go. You can go Airy, but personally, I think this page is fine. I also think this page is fine as well. Um, he's pretty much always going to out-trade you every single time. I mean, Azir's landing phase early game is extremely, extremely strong. So, yeah. Also in the Azir matchup, when Azir looks to shuffle you, you can ult. Let's say while you're getting ulted, you can press R and you go back to where you were. So shuffle goes away completely. That's really a, thing, a really good thing to note. Also, you want to hold your bubble until he's done dashing. Like doing his full combo and also you don't want to alt forwards because let's say you alt forwards you wasted your r so he can just shuffle you into the tower or shuffle you so be careful of that also in this matchup um definitely 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 look to bait using like make sure you can bait him using his q so like walk up and then he'll use q and then back up a bit so that's really good and that's pretty much how you play the matchup also never split against a champion you will literally lose and he is racist Okay, uh, Velkaz. Now, this champion isn't popular at all. I was debating whether or not put, to put Velkaz on this list because he's not popular, like, at all. But Velkaz does shit on Zoe, like, pretty hard. So, against Vel, honestly, this page right here is perfectly fine. You can probably do, like, this. But this is probably better. Um, Velkaz is going to look to shove you as much as you can. Also... Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not ult forwards against Velkaz. You will die. He will throw everything and you will die. Even if you hit bubble, you'll take so much more damage than if you hit Q. Velkaz's combo does so much damage, so please, please, please be careful of that. Um, there's also no point of buying magic resist in this matchup because he literally just deals true damage when he ults or proxies passive. Um, another thing is uh, make sure you stand like linear to your creeps so he can't look for angles around it or like walk in between your creeps that's really good like uh thing for that as well so that's how i would play the velkaz matchup and look to uh look for long range uh cues like q trades in this lane you can't really trade against him he'll always beat you okay diana now there's literally only three diana mains that main mid on the server um, you can go this rune page right here. Like, you can do this page. Like, this is fine. Also, like, the electrocute page is fine. This right here. But, against Diana, you really, really, really need to bait her into using her... Like, bait her into Q, and then instead of sidestepping it, you walk into her, so her Q misses. Because Diana Q does this. It does, like, a semicircle. So there's a hitbox like in between you and Diana that it can't be hit. So walk into Diana when she cues. Also, always save your ultimate for her ulting you. So when she R's, you are out. That's the only way you want to do that. Also, when Diana is dashing into you, that's when you want to use your bubble. That's the only time you want to use your bubble. Everfrost in this matchup is fine. Crown in this matchup is actually really good later into the game. But in laning phase, you can poke her out. But as soon as Diana hits level 3 and 6... She's going to look to all in you. She deals way more damage than you. So be careful of that. Also, do not side lane against this demonic champion. She is so cringe to verse. It's like absolutely disgusting. Just don't side lane against her. All you want to do is collect waves on the side. When Diana pushes Adam out, you collect the wave and then you push mid. You siege because you won't be able to do shit. Okay, next up is Irelia. Now, Irelia actually has the lowest base MR um, in the game. Like, one of the lowest base MRs in the game. Actually, I think they buffed it recently. I don't know if it's still that anymore. But 
Um, the Aurelia matchup, you can honestly take this page. This page is honestly fine. Um, but you, you do this. You could also do the Airy page, like this page right here. And look for short trades early. You can poke out Irelia level one. The second she hits two, if you don't dodge her E, you will die. Okay, don't get cocky. You're going to die if Irelia hits you with E. And you miss your bubble. Also, wait for... Okay, when Irelia is queuing, Irelia goes behind the target, okay? When she queues onto you. So if you queue too late, your bubble is actually going to go through the target. So what you want to do is you want to wait for Irelia to, while she's like in the air, either you queue then or you wait for her to land and then you queue behind you because that's where she's going to be. Or you can queue in front of you as she walks a little bit to the side. Also in this matchup, um, what's called really good Everfrost. So that's something that you should look into as well if you want to deal with her. Do not side in against her. You will always lose. Look for long range bubbles over the wall. And that is what I would recommend against Irelia. Okay, next is Rise. Honestly, I don't even know why I put this fucking blue bitch on this fucking list. He's so horseshit. He's so bad. But he does outscale the living shit out of Zoe, like, pretty hard. In lane, it's, like, it's not hard to lane against Rise, but it's hard to play against Rise in the fact that he can just um, rune prison you. And his jungler can come and you'll die. Like, the matchup's pretty volatile because one, Rise is fast. Rise also builds mercs. He builds tanky items, so it's hard to kill him. Um, I mean, you can look to poke him out, but honestly, I don't think that's a really good idea because you're never going to kill him. Like, ever. So, honestly, I think this rune page right here is fine. This rune page right here is fine into Rise. I don't think you're ever going to kill him other than one-shotting him later into the game, or like chugging him really, really, really hard. But the matchup is pretty, it's pretty finicky in the way that like, if he gets a lead, you're pretty much fucked. Even though the champ is horse shit, you're pretty much fucked. Be careful of standing next to creeps because he can use his E to um, hit you with his Q and also you can use his E. And then let's say you're near the creeps, then he can bring you and snare you. So be careful of that. Definitely be careful of that. Also, don't silent against Rise. Swain. Now, the only reason why Swain is up this high is because Swain is literally unkillable once he gets two items or even one item. Also, Swain is a champion that takes the Tenacity rune. Um, so it's pretty hard to kill him. So in this matchup, Leandries is really, really, really going to do a number. Leandries is going to be really good here. Also, like, heavy, heavy, heavy burst items like... Shadow Flame, Rabadons. You wanna you wanna kill Swain as fast as possible. And there's no really point of like going airy, honestly. Like you wanna just burst him. Cause later into the game, Aerie's not gonna do shit. Sure, like you can like win lane like a little bit, but as soon as it's out of lane, Swain's always gonna like he's not gonna deal more damage than you, he's just not gonna die. And he also goes Mercury Treads, so. Uh yeah. Also, Swain can side lane, but it's pretty bad. Swain honestly just like looks for picks and stuff like that. So in this matchup, like I said, just look to collect side waves and like group. Try to look for bubbles on Swain or his teammates. You're not gonna you're pretty much not gonna kill him until you get a couple items or like one or two items. Maybe you snowball and you can beat him, but other than that, I don't think so. Okay, Annie! Now Annie, mm, Annie's not a hard matchup in the sense that, like, okay, I don't think Annie is a hard matchup, but I will say, depending on how good the Annie player is, she will, like, 100% kill you. And when you're versing Annie, this is the page you go, right here. This page right here. Boom. You do this page, Annie can never, ever kill you. You have a lot of HP. You can also go Banshees. Like, if you don't build defensively against Annie, 
the bitch could be 0 and 7 and one shot you. The bitch could literally be 0 and 7 and one hit you. Like, it's crazy. It's literally fucking crazy. You just have to take this rune page and, like, go, like, Ludens, go Crown, um, and Banshees. Make sure you go Banshees. You can go Mercs if she's giving you that much of an issue, but yeah. That's what I would recommend against Annie. Also, Annie is a flanking champion, so please, 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 please ask your team to ward in certain positions where Annie might come from a flank, because in Annie, Annie's flanks are like one of the best in the game. So be very, very, very careful of that. Ask your team, like, yo, put some wards here for Annie, because we don't know where the fuck she is. Okay, Tristana. This matchup is honestly, it's only hard if she takes cleanse. It's kind it's like skill matchup if she doesn't take cleanse, but if she takes cleanse, it's literally so cringe. Um, against Trist, I honestly would recommend this rune page right here. Um, where is it? Do, do, do. Uh, do. Wait, no, no. Honestly, this rune page is fine. You still want to do the overgrowth and uh, conditioning thing. You also, in this matchup, you need to take heal or barrier. You're, do not take ignite against Tristana. You will literally lose. Don't do it. It is so stupid to do. Um, once Tristana hits level 2, she's going to look to all in you. Hold your bubble, Q her, and bait her flash. And then when she flashes, you E, and then she'll waste cleanse or whatever, and then you can just run away. Also, crown in this matchup is really, 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 really good. So you should probably go crown. Also, you can never sign against a champion. She'll always be you. Um, so you just want to group and look for bubbles. Okay, next up is Ziggs. Now, Ziggs isn't necessarily like, like it's not a hard lane, but Ziggs kind of is the same thing as Malzahar in the way where he, they just suffocate you to the point where it's extremely, 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 extremely hard to win in the fact that um, all they do is just keep you under the tower the entire game. That's their job, is to just keep you under their tower the entire game. So what you want to do is you want to take this rune page right here and you just want to scale. You can just go even with Ziggs. Sure, you can look to snowball against Ziggs, but it's kind of risky because like, let's say you fuck up your bubble or something, you, you like, you're like you actually like out of the game. You'll just shove, 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 over and over again and suffocate you. That's literally Ziggs' job. So what you need to do, okay, is be very, very, very cautious of all of this and get some good wards so your jungler can gank mid and you can deal with fit, uh, Ziggs. Also, later into the game, Ziggs, if you ult forwards, Ziggs can just throw everything at you when you are. So be careful of that as well. And I think this is the rune page that you should go against Ziggs. Also, I just realized Zareth isn't on this list. Um, I just realized Zareth isn't on this list, and Zareth is in very hard, so I'll do Zareth next. So, I think Zareth. It's the champion's demonic, first of all. Like, it's actually really hard to play against Zareth. It's really, really, really hard. Um, I would take this rune page right here. This is the rune page I would take against Zareth. You want to match his wave clear like this. Also, you want to bait. You want to bait Zareth into using his um, his stun. Also, never ult forwards against Zareth. Like, if you're on vision, he'll just throw everything at you and you'll die. Um, later into the game, when Zareth gets, like, one or two items, he can literally one-shot you with a full rotation. So be very careful of that as well. Um, you want to look for, like, put a ward in mid lane and then look for bubbles on, like, the side where he's not expecting it. And if he buys Banshee's Veil... Shave your head and move countries because you're not going to kill him. Literally ever. So, yeah. Okay. Who's next? Nico. Now, Nico is a bit weird because she's not that good of a champ right now. But she really, really dicks on Zoe super, super, super hard. Um, Against 
Nico, you can do this ring page if you're really comfortable against Nico. If you're not comfortable against Nico, then you can do this page right here. Do do do. This page is like way, way, way more safe. Like this page is way more safe. Also, when you're playing against Nico, do not stand in the minions. She will tangle barbs you into her Q and you will take a billion damage. So be careful of that. Also, if you are into Nico, she'll just um use I mean if you are into Nico, she'll walk into you, snare you, Q you, and R, and you'll die. So be careful of that. Also, her Q, I mean her W can block your Q. So that's something to be careful of as well. Also, you want to save your ultimate against Nico for getting out of her R. It's the same concept as Diana. You can look for long range Qs in this matchup. You can look for bubbles over walls. Just don't look to bubble like right away in lane because you're probably going to die. Like her Nico's base damage is early game is really, really, really high. So you have to be careful of that. And Nico doesn't really side lane. She's like kind of the same like a collection champion. She is a flanking champion and also she is like a a roamer. So make sure you ping your teammates and you get help. Like you ask your jungler to come mid or something like that. Let's say she uses her E on the wave, you can just kill her. So that's how to play against Nico. Okay, <clears throat> then the last but not least, and the very hard thing is Akali. Now, Akali. Mm, She's not, like, Akali isn't, like, amazing right now, but once Akali gets Mercs, girl, it's fucking over. Early game, you take a shit on Akali. Like, level one, two, one through four, I mean, one through five, you just shit on them over and over and over again. You just take a shit on them. You just take a shit on them. It's super easy. Um... As soon as you hit six or gets jungle attention, you're fucked. If you die once or twice in the Akali lane, it's a fucking wrap. It's a wrap. Your ass is gone. She'll kill you every portion of the game. Also, into the Akali matchup, you need to need to need to go Everfrost. You can go Ludens if you're super cocky. Or let's say you use Snowball. But you like if you're going even, you should go Everfrost. Um, Akali is a side lane champion. She will also probably take Teleport. I mean, she can take Cleanse if she takes Cleanse. Good luck. But, um, yeah. So that's what I would recommend into the Akali matchup. Do not side lane against the champion. Cannot stress that enough. Okay. Now, on to the three unholy Cthulhu World War II disgusting roach champions that you should dodge if you play against, if you're playing Zoe, you should dodge against these champs. Starting off with Lux. Now, if this was a high elo game, or like a game that you're playing on like your main or something, do, if you do not go cleanse against Zoe, I mean against Lux, you are griefing. You are literally griefing. Please go cleanse. Either you can do this rune page right here, this rune page right here, or you can go spellbook. You can go Spellbook into Lux, but the reason why Lux, the Lux matchup is so hard is because Lux, all of Lux's spells all go in a straight line, and Zoe walks in a straight line to shoot all of her spells. So, it's super, super easy to hit your spells on Zoe. She'll just, like, let's say she walks up for a Q, you just throw your E. If she, if she R's forwards, you pr she will Q and ult you. It's super, super, super awful. And Lux's laning phase is like Cthulhu strong. It's really, really, really strong. So you have to be careful of that. Later into the game, if you if you are forwards into Lux, you will die. She will touch you inappropriately and you will die. Do not ult forwards into Lux ever. You're going to die. She'll just ER you and you will die. So don't do that. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Ever, ever. Ever. Don't do that. Um, if you take these runes and cleanse, you'll be okay. Maybe okay. But Lux is just such a safe champion, and she just takes a shit on Zoe so hard. So you gotta be careful of that. Okay, next is Kassadin! Hmm, 
the most racist champion in League of Legends. Literally. So, against Cassidy in early game, like, it's pretty easy. It's not hard. It's really, it's really not that hard. Actually, I mean, okay, you actually, you can go airy into Castan. You can do this page as well. You could also do Electrocute like this. Like this rune page would be fine. But the main problem with Castan is like, if you fuck up once, you fuck up once. You, Castan is a shutdown, the game's over. As soon as Castan hits six, it, the matchup gets so hard it's ridiculous it's so 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 cancer it's awful it's awful it's awful um you can deal with Cassidy by freezing your wave or you can hard shove him in and get your jungler to dive but if you get hard shove him in and you die early it's really 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 bad it's so 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 bad do not do that so you, what you want to do is you want to control the wave in the way that uh Cassidy has to walk up for cs and you harass him and then your jungler comes and you kill him. You want to punish Cassidy as much as you can. You want to suffocate him from getting any farm or anything. Because if you don't, it's fucked. It's literally fucked. Like, the game will literally be over. Never sign against the champion other. You will die. Also, if you build these Mercury Treads... Yep. You're gonna... Yep, you're probably gonna lose the game. Um, okay. Now on to my most... Hated champion in League of Legends. For anyone that watches my stream, everyone knows that I do not like this bird Freljordian cunt. Hate her. I hate, hate, hate Anivia so much. She's just so cringe. I'm so glad she's not viable because she's like the sivir of mid lane. She's super safe, does a ton of damage, wave clear. Stalls the game for a billion years. It's really, really, really hard to deal with Anivia, in my opinion. You can go this rune page right here. Like, this rune page is fine. Um, but, honestly, like, the only way you're probably ever going to kill Anivia is if you one-shot her. So, I would take this rune page right here. Um, you, wanna, you want to to build as much damage as possible to one-shot her to get her into an uh, egg, and then you just deal with her. You also never, ever, ever alt forwards against her. You will die. I repeat, Anivia will take her icicle and shove it so far up your ass, you're going to fucking die, okay? Do not alt forwards against Anivia. You're going to die. Do not do it. Look for bubbles through walls and shit, or like through mini walls, don't alt forwards, you're gonna die. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Also, later into the game, you wanna put you wanna put vision in the lane so you can look for long range bubbles on her because she's a mobile, so if you get a pick on her, she's pretty much fucked. But honestly, the hardest thing about dealing with Anivia is her wave clear, because she just shoves you in and cancels you as a champion, you can't roam. And the fact that she is super, super, super tanky. So that is what I would recommend into Anivia. Now, that is pretty much it. The, that is all the champions, all the runes I told you to do. Um, next week, when, when this video uploads, a week from then, um, I'm going to be uploading the rest of my guide, which includes three games of me playing the three different playstyles of Zoe, which is Hedge, Q, and Bubble Zoe. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching and also thank you for supporting me. And I cannot wait for 2023 because I'm going to be streaming a bunch. And also I'm going to be making a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of content. Stay tuned for that. And also I'm so excited for you guys to see my weight loss journey. Um, I've already lost 40 pounds since I got the surgery. So it's fucking crazy. I'm literally going to be in my fiddlesticks era. Mm. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.